Hey guys, welcome to a recap of the Real Housewives of New York episode 2. Oh, Christmas tree! These girls, they are serving, they are giving. I enjoyed this whole cast. They are doing their part. Well, exception to one, but we'll get into that in a little bit, okay, guys? So, we are already going to go on a girl's trip. A girl's trip, extravaganza, eleganza to the Hamptons. That is so quick, but these girls, they know how to keep it moving, keep it interesting. I'm excited to see a whole girl's trip situation because then that's how we're really going to get to know these quirks these ladies have, okay? So the girls are going to the Hamptons, so we get to see a whole moment where Miss, 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 Say is preparing all her stuff to fit into that car and i'm like oh my god girl you packed way too much so guys Sai does not pack light she has like eight bags eight bags for three days in the hamptons why do you need eight bags you need a pack light uh -uh. um psych oh my god she is doing too much but uba she is like you know our model she is our fashionista from the face giving face and she does not even need to pack all that she is serving with just what she got on she probably brought just like one little bag and that's it okay so we also have giselle too as well who you know she packs heavy but not too much not in comparison to Sai. so already you know we're getting a lot of presents from Sai, a lot of presents from uba and giselle was not giving me much really to work with which i i felt like it's a harsh critique because we're still getting to know her but in comparison to Sai and Uba their presence are so strong and so here for filming The Real Housewives of New York okay we do get a little phone FaceTime from Bryn and Bryn is not gonna be at the trip at least for the first day holding out hope that she does make an appearance which she does but you know honestly I didn't miss her for this episode because i feel like all the other ladies were delivering and doing their part i feel like bryn she's a great addition definitely to the girls trip but she was not missed in this episode okay don't i love bryn i love bryn i'm a bryn fan but in this episode she was not missed okay so we will see bryn later on she is sick but she may be dropping in on the girls trip and i feel like it's important to be on the girls trip because i feel like that's where all the tea all the quirkiness happens and i want to see what's the quirk with bryn on a girls trip okay so now we're over at aaron's in the hamptons and this house is humongous it is big they spent a good coin on this house in the hamptons okay guys this is giving five bedrooms seven baths i don't know why you need seven baths but it has seven baths so aaron's home is super super spacious she even takes the time to lay out each lady's uh, customized pajamas which was serving hampton vibes it wasn't those tween inks pajamas that you, we have seen larsa gave the girls when she had like a girl's party over at miami no shade to larsa i love larsa but i love how chic the pajamas were that aaron had for the ladies which has their names on it i thought that was a, such a nice touch so i'm like okay aaron you're off to a good start in your hosting capabilities but you know, we know about she's gay in the scandal of it all okay can she host and provide food provide provisions of his real see okay so you know Erin she has a caterer come in to lay out you know some food for the ladies but the food is caviar now caviar is a hit or miss you either love it or you hate it and if you're gonna do it you're gonna have to have variety especially if that's all you're gonna serve so i'm like wondering okay how that is gonna be received over by the ladies because you know <laughs> cheesegate and aaron's food choices has not been on par as of late and i feel like you know she wants to prove that she's a good host is that she can throw a party and and be like the bell of the ball as a hostess okay so we're gonna see but i enjoy to see how these ladies will react because we already have this kind of shit going on so let's see so now we are over for the girls in the car ride to the hamptons you know i'm excited to see how 
kooky that they will be and we already seen the signs we already seen the signs before the girls trip actually happens okay now sigh why are you bringing toilet paper my gosh she's bringing charming toilet paper roll to aaron's home why <laughs> why would you do that but you know i kind of get it I, I get it because for me when i'm like staying over even at a hotel even i want to have my own uh pillow sheet my own covers even because i feel like the itch like the itch is real like it's, it's in your head but it's it's very much real but i never have gone as far as toilet paper i did okay so i brought okay a pillow sheet bed sheet and towels i think you need your own towel i can't use other people i can't i can't so what are you guys quirks for traveling i know you guys have that okay so i'm enjoying size size she's is hilarious in this moment you know uba even suggested she wanted even to stay at a hotel she didn't even want to stay at aaron's home but aaron's like no you gotta stay here but i feel for the girls and i like how kooky already they're acting and we're already getting a good sense of what they're like now giselle in this moment she was not present she was not serving and i feel like giselle you're becoming a wallflower and you're not delivering and so i'm just waiting for giselle to really come out and stand out and not just be a stand in you need to be a stand out so giselle was falling flat into the scene and you know sai was trying to find a way to have her contribute to this conversation so it comes up that you know the girls are wondering what activities they will be doing out in the hamptons especially in the fall because usually when you go to the hamptons is during the summer not the fall so you know sai brings up Uba brings up about horseback riding and Giselle shares that, you know, she hasn't ridden anything in quite some time, which lays her, leaves her open about a don't you ride your man type of situation question. So we learned that Giselle actually has not been intimate, at least doing the whole thing with her man since having the twins. And the twins are like one years old and the girls are gagged. They're shocked and confused to why. But we kind of learned that, you know, she's not feeling her most sexiness. You know, she has some body image issues. And this is really, really relatable. But I felt like, you know, I kind of was not ready to get this information out of Giselle. Especially already being a wallflower and not contributing much to the scenes that we're getting this from her and we'll see throughout the episode that i don't like how this is going to be a focus for giselle and i think she sees that too for herself because she, i don't think she likes that the conversation steers and focus on her sex life and i'm like yikes already because you know in the previous episode I was sharing that, you know, I kind of didn't like how she was talking down about her husband. I didn't like uh, the comments that she made. And I felt like this is the one to watch in terms of whether these two will last. She's confident, but, you know, I see the cracks. And I'm hoping, you know, after watching this episode too as well, that she can see how she kind of like puts out her relationship what's the vibe that she's giving off about her relationship and it's not good it's not good at all but i don't know if she's i don't know if pump's gonna make it to a season two okay i'm calling it right now that giselle could be one to re be replaced okay so now the girls they are getting you know hungry on this hard, hard car ride i would too just period a car ride i'm hungry okay so uba wants to know what food are these people are gonna serve you know cheesecake was a real thing and it's funny we learned that uba is actually the one who doesn't like cheese so she wants to know what she's gonna be eating while in the hamptons so the girls they facetime and call no they call Aaron to ask what are the provisions what's the food looking like because they're hungry and that's how I can tell that these girls have somewhat of a genuine friendship because these are how friends act these this is how they talk to each other they're raw honest and open because if they weren't real friends they would just politely come to their person's home have whatever they're having and then behind the person's back talk trash about it so these girls are friends okay so, Aaron is sharing, yeah, I have food over at the house. I have a whole catered uh, caviar moment for you guys, actually. And Uba is like, uh, she is gagged. She's like, caviar? 
caviar. <laughs> and I'm like, this is what I'm saying. Caviar is a hit or a miss. And you have to have like a backup just in case you don't have a crowd that enjoys caviar. So, uh, of course, the question turns to what provisions are near Aaron's home. And already Aaron is already feeling the, the sense of defeat of her not delivering in the food department once again. And that's how the girls are going to recognize. I feel like, you know, Aaron, you're... I can't trust you with my food. I can't trust you with my food. So it's funny and I feel for Erin because she has this whole caterer who's setting out, laying out the table for them. But caviar, how can you assume that everyone loves caviar? Unless everyone has said they want caviar. Oh, I don't get it. She should have just ordered like pizza, maybe some Chick-fil-A, like some real food that you know that's going to be a hit, okay? So anyways, Miss Jenna Lyons is the first to arrive to the Hamptons house, okay? Miss Jenna Lyons, I'm a fan because she is acting so nervous. She's so nervous for this girl's trip. She's never been on a girl's trip before, at least this kind. And I thought, oh, she's perfect. She's going to be perfect for this girl's trip. So Jenna, she arrives to the Hamptons and Erin offers her some caviar. And I'm like, okay, maybe Jenna Lyons like caviar. Let's let's see. Someone will like this caviar setup that Erin has laid out for the ladies. And the first thing that Jenna Lyons sees is the dill. And apparently she hates dill. And I'm like, I'm not understanding that at first before she mentions it. I'm like, oh, another person who doesn't like caviar. And I felt for the caterer too. Because they really took the time to lay it out for the ladies. And to hear that, you know, someone's not being excited for the food that you prepared. That hits. That can hit. That can hit the heart. That can hit the heart. Okay, guys? So I felt for Aaron again in that moment. I'm like, oh, no. Um, so, ooh, Aaron should have had pizza. Okay? She, or at least took the ladies' request on what would they like to eat. I feel like that would have been proper after cheesecake. Okay? So, Aaron got... What? Aaron got right, at least, I would say, is the space. It seems like all the ladies will have their own space, um, especially if Bryn is not Bryn is not going to be there. Um, it's it, The place is gorgeous. It's amazing. Jenna Lyons is getting the tour of it all. And she's, like, saying that the size of this house, even the living room alone, is the size of her whole house. Her house was, like, 15 square footage, 15,000 square foot, no, sorry, 1,500 square footage, of her Hampton home. But Jenna's, no, sorry, but but uh Aaron's, hers is like over six thousand. I was like, oh my god, that's a lot of house. And that's just your vacation home? Oh my god, it's big. So back to Uba. <laughs> Uba and Sai and Giselle, they are just thinking about what activities they're gonna have going on. And you know, as I mentioned before, you know, Giselle she was sharing that, you know, she, she hasn't been intimate with her husband. The girls are feeling confused. And, you know, the girls are just trying to have fun in the car ride. But as I mentioned, Giselle was not here for the, so much for the fun. I feel like she kind of changed the mood a little bit about talking about the lack of intimacy that she's sharing with her husband. But finally, the ladies do arrive to the Hansoms. And Sai compliments the food as she enters in. I feel like, Sai, that is a good strategy because you were not on proper footing with Miss Aaron because the whole controversy was focused on you, okay? But in the confessionals, we hear the truth. Sai is not a fan. She's like, this is high-low. She's like, if you're going to do high, do high. Because she feels like, why are we having caviar on a grocery store bodega Pringle. Like, why are we doing that? At least, can we have it, like, on a proper pancake? And I'm like, damn, 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 damn. But at least she tried. She was nice in front of Aaron's face. But in these confessionals, she's a thug. She's a thug. She's a thug. So Uba is happy with her room. But her focus is on provisions, and I cannot blame her. I feel like when you, you know, out from just traveling, you need food ASAP. They should have snacks in the car, honestly. They they were not ready for this girl's trip. So Giselle, she, everyone's happy with her room, except Giselle. She's a downer. 
But I don't know if I could blame her. I thought the room was still beautiful. I didn't see anything wrong with the room. I guess she feels like in vacation she wants more of a mature room. Which I feel like, you know, as the hostess, I think you should give everyone a good, you know, mature room. I think to have, like, children's decoration and you gave that to a grown woman, that's kind of risky. But, you know, just already, she's already been a downer and it's just becoming a trend. And that's not really how we want to fall in love with our housewives, okay? We want you to be the joy, the belle of the ball, serve a little bit, you know? So, uh, you know, Sai has to get all her crap <laughs> from the car, her, all her eight bags into this house. And, you know, Erin is just shocked for this being a three-day extravaganza eleganza that she needs eight bags of clothing. But, yep, she does. And I'm enjoying every moment of Sai being extra and having the ladies help her bringing her stuff into the house okay so now okay the ladies are, are definitely hungry because even me i couldn't just snack on print on I almost said pringles i couldn't just snack at least okay i could snack on the pringles but i don't think they brought enough pringles to feel to to nourish these ladies okay so so the caviar is not enough so uba she leaves and she tries to go find provision and it turns out all the places were closed she couldn't find anything but the rest of the ladies they're you know being polite they're 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 holding in their hunger until dinner for later and so the girls they are talking and sharing about each other's sex life so these girls they are interested into Giselle's sex life once again and you know they're sharing with the group now because remember the information was amongst Sai and Uba but now Sai she presents it to the ladies and you know I felt I could feel for Giselle I didn't like that moment but ooh, I guess so Jenna she she took notice and says that you know she brought some lingerie as gift for the ladies and that later they can do some sort of like a little bit of a fashion show a little bit of fun tease you know I felt like Jenna was being sweet to kind of understand Giselle and to have her be more comfortable in her body and who she is and I thought that was very sweet of Jenna and you know just uh, I guess she was not too excited for the conversation to be this as a focus but i feel like she kind of set herself up for that so anyways they go to dinner and they were a mess at dinner these people will not be invited at this restaurant ever again i would not host these ladies ever again if they think they can just walk into i'm sorry i love uba but you can't just walk into the people's pantry and pull their coconut milk and take it for yourself okay so once again uh the girls they open up you know, about their sex life and getting a sense to why Giselle does not want, and I'm getting a sense of Janelle, Giselle does not want to be the focus of this conversation again. So we then get to see Jenna Lyons open up about her sexuality and how she came out. And she shares that it wasn't even by her choice that while she was working, that her head of uh, PR contacted her and asked to confirm or deny whether she was in a relationship with this woman. And she had to confirm because, you know, she didn't really have much of a choice. And this was during a time where she was going through the divorce, separating from her husband her ex-husband so for jenna she felt like she never had those strong overwhelming feelings of passion to towards her ex-husband but until she was with this friend who was gay um she was able to understand and feel these emotions towards her so while they didn't last in the relationship it was a significant relationship for her to really discover who she was as a person in her sexuality and i thought that was amazing for her to share and be open about this to the table especially since giselle was you know not feeling the whole conversation so i'm just happy that you know these ladies are creating a safe space to talk because i feel like there's no judgment at all i do feel like they genuinely want to help out giselle i don't feel like they're being kind of shady or trying to make it into a moment it's just i could sense giselle not being too comfortable with this as a conversation particularly it didn't help her case when she describes you know her becoming getting into a relationship with her husband she shares with the ladies that they were friends first for for numerous for quite some time a couple of years they were roommates and she never felt like any sort of attraction towards him but he was in love with her so i feel like 
she was just going with the flow and it was very one-sided and i don't know i feel so i feel so an interesting energy about this situation that i if i was her husband i would not have i i would not like my partner saying that oh you know it was only like pretty much one-sided i i i i wonder if that relationship will stand the test of time but we'll see because i'm not getting a good sign from giselle giselle you need to save your marriage girl uh, the whole internet needs to tell you that. I'm telling you that, okay? So the ladies, they get back home and they are having a lingerie party. So Jenna took the time and she already had this plan. She had gifts for these ladies and she, uh, I don't know if she took anyone's sizes, but she hands out everyone's lingerie. And the ladies are liking it. At least they're being polite and showing modeling off the lingerie but Giselle her whole energy she came down she was just a downer and I get it because already the girls knew that she was feeling insecure about her body after giving birth and also the lingerie did not fit her but she could have zhuzhed it up she could have made it work she could have like pin it a little bit here but don't insult the person who gave you a gift out of the kindness of their heart for them to feel like a sense of, you know, regret. Because I know, and you know, Jenna Lyons already mentioned that she was feeling uncomfortable in going on the girl's trip and being weird. So I felt like I was sensing, you know, Jenna feeling some kind of way that, you know, Giselle was not receiving her gift too well. And she could have done the polite thing and just, you know, zhuzh it up, suck it up and enjoy the moment. But instead, she was really harping on her body image issues and how she feels in this outfit and why, how dare Jenna gives her a large, like... Oh, our girl Giselle, I, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling her, and I hope that she's seeing this. And I know this is already all film, so maybe we can get a turnaround with her. I want her to really speak on this and how her behavior has been so far on the Real Housewives of New York. Um, hopefully we get some feedback from her on the reunion to her take on these situations, but she is not coming off well and I'm not enjoying the moment for her. Okay. So anyways, that was the end of the episode and you know, all the girls are sensing Jenna and feeling some type of way of how Giselle is, uh, acting towards the gift that she received and we see Jenna has hurt feelings, but we get to address these hurt feelings next episode, which is a quick turnaround. These girls... They get to it. So we get to see that. And we also get to see Brynn next episode. So we are also getting the drama. Okay. So let's see. I'm excited for the next episode. I wonder what foods Aaron's going to give. That's going to be our thing now with Aaron. What food is Aaron going to serve? What she's going to serve? What she's going to give? But so far, she is zip zip not a win yet and i need a win for her i want her to host an event with some really good food okay that you know shuts these ladies up okay because that's what she needs to do at this point so guys that was the recap what did you guys think of this episode who's your favorite and who you think it needs to go don't be shy let me know down in the comments down below do not forget to like share and comment i appreciate every one of you taking the time to watch my recaps and as always share as much kindness as possible okay you got no choice it's no choice goodbye